historically, most of the water in California would come from snow melt in the mountains. And then as it came onto the Central Valley floor, it would spread out. And that's where we'd see a lot of wetlands and floodplains. Many of the native wetland-dependent species in California relied on these Central Valley wetlands um, and the, the persistence of them, the productivity of them. Um, and so that's one of the really fundamental challenges ecologically in the current landscape is you know, we've, we've lost many of those wetlands, about 95% of them to be precise. The number of species that are declining, a lot of that is related to the decline of wetlands. But many of those ecological functions could be restored, at least in part, through various restoration initiatives. The one thing that I find about the people who live in the valley is that they have a tendency to be quite hospitable. This is a rural agricultural community. It's made up of different waves of immigrants that came to either this country or this state looking for a better life. And so you see a, a rich diversity of people. It's deep in agriculture, so the residents have a connection to the ag industry in one way or another. Agriculture uses a lot of water. In our valley, we grow some, somewhere near 400 agricultural products. And those products are uh, incredibly important to the survival of our country. There's a real understanding in this valley of the need for clean potable water, not just for agriculture, but also for human consumption, for, for our own needs. Water is everything in the Central Valley. So anything that we can do to reduce our water and put water back into the ground to help uh, people that live here, and of course agriculture, is tremendous. This is the most busy part of the world in terms of agriculture. So to be part of this pet positive movement here in Modesto really is special and speaks volumes to not only what we're doing here as a site and as a company with PepsiCo, but also how important it is to our community. Yeah. Here you go. Pet Positive, it's a movement, so specifically as a site, you know, we're trying to be a, a net positive water producer by the year 2030, so we're actually trying to put more water back into the, the earth than, than we're consuming. And then in manufacturing, we're always trying to reduce our water usage. We have different systems and processes to curtail that and recycle water as well. The investment we made in the wildlife refuge uh, had a lot to do with water. My name is Sean Brophy. I'm the deputy project leader of the San Luis National Wildlife Refuge Complex, which is about 10 minutes north of the town of Los Banos in the San Joaquin Valley of California. This area, which we call the Grasslands Ecological Area, is a designated wetland of international importance, and we're here to continue to provide habitat for wildlife in this area. Ducks Unlimited is the world's leader in wetlands conservation. We've conserved over 15 million acres since our inception in 1937. Six years ago, I met Sean Brophy. He had identified several wants and needs of the East Bear Creek unit, mainly looking at ways to improve manageability of those wetland systems. So we initially identified some of the core projects, which was increasing wetland levee heights and water delivery and drainage capacity. Over time, we identified ways to really increase the functionality of these wetlands, make them larger. Ducks Unlimited, they design the project, they do the engineering in collaboration with us, and they oversee the construction of the project. So we can't do it without our partners. The funding with this project was provided partially from NACA and partially from the donation from PepsiCo. And that really helped us take our design to the next level. It really unlocked a bunch of design freedom to think bigger than we might have been able to initially. A lot of the money that we invested in that project is going to help uh, divert water into certain areas so it can be reused and not wasted. And the way that happens is that we sort of have stair-stepped these wetlands that they are now interconnected and that as you move water from one wetland to the next, they can continue to provide wetland benefits and wildlife benefits at the same time. And subsequently, the water's on the landscape longer. It's recharging the groundwater, 
provide habitat functions. You know, it really showcases that, you know, we need to replicate this more and more places down the river so we can take that water off the main river, flood wetlands, take the stress off levees, because most of the downstream communities are being affected by these floods. And so wetlands really support like a positive place for the water to go. <laughs> Rather than flooding people's homes and things like that, it can flood natural habitat that, that helps wildlife. This is a win-win situation all the way around. Our farmers win, we have aquifer replenishment, our flood plains are controlled. Not only does it just benefit the wildlife, but it benefits humans as well. It was a major undertaking, and I'm really happy that PepsiCo was involved on that, and Ducks Unlimited being a nonprofit organization, being involved in that. We need to partner with our private companies and our nonprofits in order to continue these it's really important that there be this synergy, and this particular area has done a fantastic job. It was an awesome opportunity for us to be involved uh, in that project, and it's a great example of the PEP Positive Initiative, and uh, we were honored to be a part of it. You have to have massive amounts of collaboration to make these projects successful. You have to have everybody pulling in, in the same direction, have everybody bought in to, to this idea that we, we can have a balance, that we can um, do things that are good for people and good for the environment, and this is how it can look.